Okay, welcome back, uh, everyone. We'll uh, continue with the next chapter here, which is chapter 15. And it talks about interceding for the lost. So far, we are talking about praying for others. Now, very specifically, how to pray for people who don't know the Lord Jesus Christ is what we are saying. So those who are lost uh, means those who are not yet saved or those who have not received salvation. So what is the appropriate way of praying for such people? A few things which we have to understand when we are praying for people who don't believe is there is a role which Satan plays okay, in keeping them away from the knowledge of God. So we are saying that there is an interference of the enemy which is not letting people know and understand the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. So there is a spiritual interference. Okay. And so when we pray for people who don't know Christ, one is, yes, we have to pray and say, Lord, I pray, let them come to know you, let them be saved. Uh, let them be delivered from the works of uh, the devil, all that. We can pray for them. But that won't be sufficient. Because we know that there is an active interference of Satan and his demonic powers in keeping people captivated, you know, under their works or their influence. So one is we have to pray. Second is what we call as spiritual warfare okay spiritual warfare now when we talk about interceding for the lost we may think only about our family members or you know people who uh, whom we love who are close to us but we can use these same principles for cities for nations for communities because there are a lot of people who don't know christ isn't it uh, and the Bible says that Satan will want to keep them under his own influence. So everything that we learn in this chapter can be applied for not just uh, individuals whom we love, but others, you know, uh, people in our city, people in our nation, so on and so forth. So here are a couple of things that we um, can recognize about the influence of Satan. It is all here in our notes uh, in chapter 16. So Satan, he hinders okay, um, salvation. He hinders the work of salvation. 2 Corinthians 4 verses 3 and 4. Would somebody be able to read this passage for us? 2 Corinthians 4 verses 3 and 4. Uh, one second, Rin. We'll have to use the mic. So, yeah. Please, could you? Yeah, you can read it into the mic, please. But even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. Mm. Okay. So, you notice there that. What has happened to the eyes of unbelievers? They have been blinded. Okay, so blinded, or there is a veil over their eyes, which is caused by demonic powers. So even if you know, sometimes we can preach very good. We can uh, we can sing. We can have the best program. Um, we can be very friendly, we can, you know, be approachable, all that. We do everything in our strength to minister to people, but still they're not able to perceive God's love. They're not able to understand who is this Jesus? Why is it so important, you know, that Jesus died for us? He uh, brought us forgiveness. I don't believe it. Because the Bible says that what does Satan do? He blinds. 
he veils their eyes so that they are not able to see it they are not able to perceive it so you know there are many other scriptures here as well um, i'm not going to you know touch on each of them just so we can go a little faster but please do study each of them and you know you will understand that he blinds the minds of people with deception okay so maybe we are telling them 20 times 30 times we've told them jesus loves you god wants to forgive you he wants to pull you out of this lifestyle that you're in they never get it what i don't understand because there is blindness spiritual blindness which is caused by satan okay let's move on we also see that satan tries to keep people in spiritual prisons okay or he captures them in maybe a kind of thinking or some habits or you know uh, some lifestyle some behavior he keeps them bound and that's why we are using the term prison it's not a literal prison but they are bound to a certain lifestyle a thinking pattern they are not able to break out of it okay so let's read ephesians 2 and verse 2 Ephesians 2 and verse 2 please Yeah friends You can take the mic please yeah take it and read fast fast we are trying to save time In which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and okay. of the rulers of the kingdom of the air the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient yeah so you see the spirit which is at work it says among those who are disobedient so he is referring to the people who don't yet know christ who are disobedient to the things of god but why are they disobedient it says there is a spirit at work in them meaning there is influence of demonic powers right which keeps people away from god okay we will study more when we talk about you know praying for regions and praying for uh, communities sometimes we see certain kind of strongholds you know, maybe it's alcohol maybe it's you know some kind of a lustful lifestyle but you see that in general you know people are bound by these things they're not able to break free they're not able to break free but our understanding from the scriptures is that there is a spirit at work and it's not the holy spirit because what did jesus say the holy spirit will come he will glorify me so the work of the holy spirit is to glorify jesus whenever you know there is a gift of the spirit manifestation of the gift of the spirit or we are saying oh we are doing this by the holy spirit what will the holy spirit do honor god always honor god will never dishonor god or dis never dishonor jesus but what will the worldly spirit or you know the demonic spirits do they will never glorify god they will bring destruction they will bring um, you know um, uh, they will enslave people to all these habits and lifestyles and things like that so we see in scripture that satan and his spirits are at work okay uh, which keep people at least in this one verse we notice disobedience they are disobedient to god because they are being influenced by demonic spirits maybe we can read one more passage 1 john 5:19 prince you can only read it since mike is there first epistle of john chapter 5 verse 19 we know that we are children of god and that the whole world is under the control of the evil one hmm. see so clear even apostle john is saying we are the children of god but the whole world is what under the influence of the evil one so we have to pray yes but we also have to battle otherwise it's not going to be easy to bring out the so called prisoners so whenever we want to minister salvation to people there is an aspect of what we known as spiritual warfare because satan will resist it 
the demons will resist it okay we want to go do outreach it won't be easy and i'm not saying to to you know uh, scare us that oh it won't be easy no actually uh, if you're a believer or if you're here on the earth nothing is easy because there is uh, an active enemy you know which we all have we should just not read too much into it all we need to know is we are victorious because of the cross and we have to enforce our victory and keep moving forward okay uh, so yes there is an enemy he will try to oppose which is a known fact okay but we need to learn how to engage with the enemy and take our victory okay so especially when we talk about salvation we see that there is spiritual blindness there is uh, uh, the spirit of this world influencing or at work so you know we would notice all kinds of you know immorality sinful deeds social evils like you know prostitution corruption trafficking and you wonder how can people be like this you know how how is it they're so numb they're so you know like Uh, their hearts are like stone they can't sense anything they just get into evil stuff but you see it's not just them there are demonic spirits which influence right violence mob violence and you're thinking how can so many people you know uh, beat up thrash up uh, mercilessly you know helpless people but it's not just them you see there is a god of this world small g god of this world and uh, the influence of the demonic spirits which we have to fight against but the good news is that the cross has already won the victory amen and believers need to know this and believers know this we will be able to dominate okay the influences the demonic forces in the world okay now let's also recognize that uh, i was saying that satan will try to hinder in first thessalonians 2:18 paul says he says you know i i wanted to come to you i wanted to do this but satan opposed us satan hindered us so it's understood if somebody's kingdom is going to be um taken over they will resist it so satan will oppose when we uh, you know especially we fight for souls in the spiritual realm so we are saying that when it comes to praying for souls lost people those who are not saved uh, we need to pray but we also need to engage in spiritual warfare so uh, the bible you know reminds us that though people are enslaved by the enemy the church okay the church the church is who church is a building church is a people right so uh church is me church is you so you and i the bible says that our responsibility is to arise and shine okay and we have been given the authority to set these prisoners free not in our own strength but because of what jesus has done on the cross okay so there are again you know many passages that talk about it where uh, uh, you know jesus uh, said in um, uh, matthew 16 remember he said i give you the keys of the kingdom i give you the keys of the kingdom you can bind you can lose you can use the authority and yes satan is doing all these things but you can overcome you can release the kingdom of god you know over the lives of people because as a believer as the church you now we carry the authority uh the kingdom of god suffers violence and the violent take it by force so as believers especially when it comes to the salvation of people we have to be violent not in a negative sense in a positive sense where you know how paul wrote when i hear that someone stumbled i get angry he says so in a spiritual man you know when we see the wrong things we do get upset how can satan do this how can these demonic spirits do this no it's not correct 
now we have to release the 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 kingdom of god which is much greater than any demonic kingdom uh, in the name of jesus over the people and you know we have to see these people set free so that kind of a violence it's a good violence where we are upset with the wrong things of the devil and uh, you know we are intentional about bringing back all these people who are captured under the influence of the devil so that kind of violence, the violent take it by force so as believers there is that element of um, you know forceful reclaiming of what belongs to god you know what belongs to uh, the kingdom of god so that attitude we need to have and when we are talking about the lost yes pray for them when i say pray we we said right you petition god say dear lord uh, heavenly father we pray let these people be saved that's fine but that's not all we will have to go into spiritual warfare mode because we are fighting against the enemy and we've already been given the authority okay so uh, it's a forceful kind of a praying that we have to come into in second corinthians 10 verses 3 through 4 you know the bible also 3 through 6 the bible also says that we must cast down you know every thought that exalts itself against the knowledge of god so there are many thoughts out there in the world which are also influenced by um, demonic spirits in you know many a time they will not acknowledge Jesus. They will not acknowledge that Jesus is the Son of God. They will not acknowledge that the cross is the finished work. All these thoughts which, you know, are put in people. Like, uh, uh, you know, when you read the book of Acts, you will see Paul goes to different places. Why am I always saying Acts, Acts? Because I'm teaching the subject Acts, you know. So when you're reading that, those things come to your mind first that's the reason so uh you see that he goes to different places in every city there is a different understanding you know some people believe that uh, gods become humans where did they get the idea from okay every thought that exalts itself against the knowledge of god okay some people believe uh, you know when he goes to Athens, some people believe that pleasure is everything you know life is uh, life th that's all you live to to enjoy and then life is just once where did they get that thought it does not glorify jesus every thought that exalts itself against the knowledge of god there are some other people they believe that uh, life came through a single spark something where did these thoughts come from these are all thoughts against the knowledge of god then he goes to corinth there they believe in some other god goddess they then he goes to ephesus there they believe in some other philosophy so you see there are so many different things that are against the knowledge of god okay but the bible says god has given us weapons for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but they are mighty through god okay for the pulling down of strongholds so these thoughts these ideologies and the things that satan uh, comes up with with a normal approach we cannot deal with it but we need spiritual weapons what are spiritual weapons word of god holy spirit the blood of jesus right um uh, then what else all the the armor that we have the name of jesus we have so many weapons which have been given to us. We use these weapons against any thought that is against, you know, the knowledge of God. So that's how we tell them, use spiritual weapons. So I want to remind us, uh, though we are saying that we have an active enemy, believers are not supposed to run. You know, sometimes what happens, believers think, oh my goodness, I never knew all this, demonic influence i'm so scared now i can't you know i have to be quiet so that i'm safe no bible is also teaching us we are victorious we are we have the armor of god why do you want to be afraid right jesus has won the victory on the cross so 
should you be running or should the devil be running okay so even though it came with the slight pause delay lag it came the answer yeah the devil should be running okay we should not be afraid we have the victory we have the weapons we have the authority only thing is we are not using it we don't know that we can use it but now just reminding us that we can use the weapons of our warfare you no know, you can't fight the devil with a with a stick and a gun okay devil get away i have a gun he'll be like i don't care our weapons are not the human weapons and satan is sca not scared of those weapons but spiritual weapons when you begin to declare the word of god when you begin to declare what the blood of jesus has done right he can't stand it he will have to run okay so use spiritual weapons against the enemy and i want to remind us you know the bible says that jesus christ has won victory over demonic powers on the cross 2000 years ago okay so this has to be very clear in our minds we already have the victory can somebody read colossians chapter 2 verses 14 and 15 colossians 2 verses 14 and 15 okay wh whoever is reading it please use the mic please use the mic okay. having wiped out handwriting of requirements that was against us mm. which was contrary to us and he has taken it out of the way having nailed it to the cross having disarmed principalities and powers he made a public spectacle of them triumphing over them in it wow see so much of language that is used is so is victorious isn't it disarmed disarm means the enemy um soldiers don't have any armor they are disarmed make a public spectacle is to completely put them down then triumphing over them all this is language which is telling us that when jesus hung on the cross satan was defeated badly okay to put it in the simplest language terrible defeat now sometimes you have your cricket matches right like somebody gets 300 400 the other team gets only 50 and they are just balled out and you're like what is this defeat it's terrible defeat if you compare it you know with any other defeat but the bible is saying satan lost the battle so badly he's destroyed there are many other verses that talk about the same thing and the bible also talks about the believers authority okay ephesians 2 verses 4 to 6 can somebody read that but god who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us even when we were dead in trespasses made us alive together with christ you have been saved by grace you have been saved and raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in christ jesus okay wonderful so you see that last part in christ jesus we are seated with christ in the heavenly places that is a spiritual reality physical reality we are seated in bible college on plastic chairs okay but what is the spiritual reality we are seated with christ in the heavenly places the meaning of that is see when christ sits sitting is symbolic of you know i've done everything i finished everything i'm sitting with authority right everything is under me now i'm sitting because jesus finished his work so he's sitting in the heavenly places that's a sign of authority and the bible reveals to us we are seated with him how amazing that shows us that we have the authority with jesus so imagine how you would command demonic powers if you know you're commanding from there you're sitting next to jesus place of authority and you're commanding demonic powers would you command with 
courage, boldness, or how? You would, right? Because you're also seated in a position of authority. So spiritually, you and I right now, the Bible says, we are seated with Christ in the heavenly places. That is the kind of authority, you know, every believer has. Every believer has. So we can use that authority. Jesus has already defeated the devil. He has already given us, you know, authority like this. Even when he sent disciples before he died on the cross, he, he said, nothing by any means shall harm you. Remember? In Luke 10, verse 19, he said, you will trample. Uh, can somebody read that? Luke 10, verse 19. Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions. Yes. And all over the power of the enemy. And mm. nothing shall by any means hurt you. See, so authority was given in such a way that I told you, the devil should run away from us. We should not run away from him. Nothing by any means shall harm you. I've given you authority like that. So, when we're talking about spiritual warfare, be bold. Don't think, oh, what will happen? How will I deal? No, we are victorious. Jesus has defeated the devil. He has triumphed upon the devil on the cross 2,000 years ago. Okay? I am seated with Christ in the heavenly places. It's just mind boggling. What victory is there in the cross? What authority is given to every believer? So when I pray for the lost, I can go against the enemy and say, no, no devil, you will not do this, right? I can use my spiritual weapons and set those prisoners free, okay? So every believer can engage in spiritual warfare to uh, see the lost saved. So how do we pray for the lost? Uh, when we prayed for family members, that time also there was a mention. I'll quickly you know, run through again. So when we pray for uh, believers, for somebody who's lost, we would say something like, God, um, do you touch their hearts. You speak to them. Uh, you show them what is right, what is wrong. Okay. Uh, we would also say, Lord, you draw them to yourself. All this is based on scripture. So the verses are already listed in your notes. Um, we would say that God, um, you help them to have knowledge of the truth so that they can escape the trap of the devil. Maybe they are not understanding what's happening. Okay, but we pray, Lord, help them. Help them realize that they are under the trap of the devil. Uh, give them knowledge about you. Give them wisdom. Give them revelation. Uh, about you so that they can you know, wake up, uh, they, so that they can realize that they have a better calling for their lives and uh, that you have made great power available to them. So just wake them up while we are praying. Give them that revelation. Give them that understanding. You can also pray uh, and say, God, send laborers. Okay, laborers. Laborers, um, this is a prayer which Jesus prayed where he says, people to speak to them, people to minister to uh, the lost. So we can ask God for that. We can also pray for supernatural encounters. Okay, supernatural encounters means um, let them have dreams. Um, I know of people, some people, though it's not the normal way. Normal is, you know, we go, we share to them about Jesus. But sometimes, People may have a dream, okay, they may see an angel, uh, they may have a vision, uh, they have some supernatural encounter and give their lives to Jesus. So sometimes such things can also happen. Okay? They can have a dream and Jesus is calling them. So such things can happen. We should pray that Lord let all these things happen and they can come to the Lord. So this is the way in which you pray. Now, how do you exercise your authority in spiritual warfare. Okay, here are the ways in which we can do it. We can make declarations of victory of the cross. Okay. So we can say that, you know, uh, Jesus has already won the victory on the cross uh, because of what Lord Jesus has done. You know, uh, the work of redemption is available for these people. The blood of Jesus uh, speaks 
base over these people. So you can begin to declare you know, about the cross, the work of Jesus, the, you know, the shed blood of the cross. And you can begin to speak release, okay, release for these prisoners. So you know, sometimes in our declarations, we are very authoritative. We can even speak to the devil and say, oh, I command, we command that you know, these people will be set free you know, in Jesus' name. Things like that. We can say like that, There's, or rather uh, exercise authority like that. There's nothing wrong with it because we are speaking against demonic powers. Okay, So we can go forcefully against these demonic powers. We can uh, even bind. In using authority, remember, we can bind, isn't it? So we can bind demonic spirits. We can lose um, the the love of God upon the people, things like that. So we, we can place such prayers and declarations over the people. Then we can actually identify you know, some of the issues. Uh, like, remember we said there can be knowledge against God, which is exalting its against uh, the knowledge of God. So when we identify, OK, here, here is the issue, the knowledge, which is keeping them away from God, then one thing to do is um, for us to preach the gospel or take the message. See, um, when, uh, again, like when Paul went to Athens, he talked to them in their context to tell them, yes, there is a God. You know, this altar of the invisible God that you are praying for, let me tell you about this invisible God. And then he begins to speak and reveal the truth uh, so that their understanding can be changed. So you know, we can speak truth into their lives. Uh, we can address the issues. Sometimes you have issues um, where people say there is no God, Okay, faith and science. You know, it helps when, when you share the truth. It really helps. It enlightens the people. So you can begin from there. That is also, in a way, spiritual warfare. Uh, and then in a prayer, you can say something like, I pull down these philosophies. You know, I, I break it. I tear it. You can use language like that. Because what are you doing? By your faith, you are releasing your authority. Okay, And it begins to affect the demonic world. So you can tear down those imaginations. And many a time, what people do is they may go specific. For example, let's say we are praying for uh, the salvation of a particular community. And corruption is the biggest problem. Okay, And as we are praying for them, we recognize that this issue, it's a spiritual issue. It's not just the people, but there is a demonic influence. So when we pray, you know, we can pray things like we break a stronghold of corruption of this community in the name of Jesus. We tear it down in the name of Jesus. Okay? So you understand? You can go specific if you know what that is. Corruption or uh, whatever, alcoholism or addiction or suicide or strife. You would know what is the specific of that community, and you can pray towards that. Be anger. Okay, so if the Holy Spirit reveals you very specifically, you can go against that. Then you can um, say something like, "Okay, I destroy, I destroy the work, uh, works of the the spirits that are at work in these people." So you know, in in these manner, in this manner, you can actually engage in spiritual warfare. So prayer is inviting the work of God and saying, Lord, you know, you give them conviction to draw them to you. Uh, and uh, what does it say? Send people in their lives. That is prayer. Spiritual warfare is we are taking the authority and we are saying, you know, we release them. We destroy every wrong philosophy. Yeah, and maybe you can also go very specific. So, you know, some people talk about um, it, it is called as spiritual mapping. Okay. In spiritual mapping, what they do, they will uh, go to a place 
and carefully they will identify okay this area these are the demonic spirits here. this area these are the demonic spirits so like that they'll come up with a map and when they pray for that region they will go specific you know on those particular uh, demonic spirits so this is also uh, done by many christians um, yeah so this is how you understand you know praying for the lost so here are some things that in addition to whatever i said we must understand regarding spiritual warfare one we should not become um, you know a devil or demon conscious you know, when, whenever we talk about the demonic uh, people become very like alert oh i think this is a demon that is a demon you know this thought process is demon that behavior is the don't become very dem conscious we must be aware yes that's all i think more than that don't become uh, it, it is unhealthy we should be more god conscious isn't it we should be more aware of the power of the cross the victory of the cross our authority that should fill our minds all this demonic is just by the way right don't give the demonic your center of attention to become demon conscious okay? when you uh, consider spiritual warfare second is um, you know how i told us about spiritual mapping you know a place and how some believers they identify which are the spiritual you know uh, the spiritual influence of that region but sometimes people become very stuck in spiritual mapping okay they just classify and classify and classify ah uh, okay this temple is here so this is this that is there that place of worship is there that is that so people become very conscious about spiritual mapping also but that is not very biblical it's just for our understanding that's all getting too much into it is unhealthy so be very careful uh, about these matters and also remember when we are praying like this okay what happens uh, we think that you know we can control let's just take for example there is a parent the son does not know the law the parent is a strong believer they are praying they are engaged in spiritual warfare a parent begins to think i can control my son okay i will pray i will make sure if he is not with the lord i am make sure he comes to know the lord so that's a good intention but you know at the end of the day whether the son believes in god or not it will depend on his will no matter what good spiritual warfare father is engaging in you know, he can break the hold of every demonic power the son has to make the choice isn't it so what will help for the son to make the choice spiritual offer is prayer okay all that is me what else ah huh? god's word okay yes that's true what else will help the person make a choice love yeah the parents love yes that will make a difference yes conviction of holy spirit okay okay um uh, sorry i can't hear you to experience god okay to experience god in his life okay so yeah that will also help okay great so some good points that we got so far we can do our praying fighting in the spiritual realm but they need to the heart needs to be open now imagine if the father is not loving if the father is not uh, you know sharing from the word the heart of that child is like i don't want to believe in this god if you know if i want to become so angry like my dad i don't want to you you get so there is the other side where if you want 
person to make a certain decision many other things matter okay but ultimately the choice would be the sons we already said we cannot control any human being with prayer okay controlling people is what hmm? what is it i didn't hear does god control us yeah demons control us right so what yeah huh? black magic no actually you know what it is witchcraft controlling people is witchcraft okay and that's how you see that in in the word of god that uh, it's the demonic powers which try to control people so why do people do all those things cuz they want it a certain way isn't it but when you look at the kingdom of god we are praying blessings over people's lives they still have free will we can never control anyone through our prayer or through our spiritual warfare okay so we must remember that we must always remember that yes so engage in prayer uh, fight in the spiritual realm but also do other things which can positively influence the person to make this choice okay so if we are talking about a community if the church is not a good testimony in the community whatever spiritual warfare we are doing how will they be open isn't it to the gospel if we ourselves are in corruption people will say how oh, can you come and preach to us you understand so there are these two aspects we cannot control we can positively influence okay this is the manner in which we can um pray and in the end for an encouragement you know, there is this section about caleb's experience so you know caleb in joshua chapter 14 um he is given a mountain he goes and asks he's so strong even when he's old he goes and says give me my mountain and they give him a mountain that place is known as kirjat arba okay and kirjat arba was a place inhabited by um uh, anakim giants so it was a dangerous place you would not go over there because it's little risky the giants lived there but after the place was given to caleb it became heaven okay heaven is a place of friendship association so basically this is to just encourage us and say that yes there can be people who are so far away from god and uh, you know there can be even territories and communities that are so far away from god but once we win them over for christ those same hostile people or communities they can become uh, you know restored in such a way that they become very beautiful glorifying god where people can actually um, come to know god you know through those individuals or through the community so god is able to do it uh, there are many testimonies i think i told you one of my uh, friends like she was praying for her daughter who was so far away from the lord but uh, it's amazing <coughs> how uh, her daughter came back to god and now she and her husband are serving the lord okay so me after having seen how it was when that daughter was far away and how it is now when she is serving god it's amazing but the good thing is the parents used to pray like this they used to literally hold hands and pray and say no lord you have given this child and we will not let the devil have her so we we go against you know the influences of the enemy we bind it we break it we tear it down they used to pray like that and it's amazing to see how the life of that child is now turned around okay so just want to encourage us you know we can uh, and should pray for people who are lost so any thoughts any questions before we wrap up 
Okay, there's uh, there is something here in the chat. I will read it. So Jashin says, sometimes I have noticed when I pray for others, they get the deliverance and healing. Uh, and I know that I'm called by God. My question is, many times my family suffer. Is it because I'm not praying enough for my family or should I not pray for others when they request? Okay, <laughs> Jashin, very, uh, you know, a thought-provoking question. Uh, but what I would say is, see, we have to live by the standard of God's word. Okay. Now, God's word says that, you know, he's our deliverer, he's our healer and all that. Uh, so when you pray for somebody, they get healed. When you're saying when you pray for your own family, they didn't experience it. But that doesn't change the standard of God's word, isn't it? God's word still says, you know, I'm Jehovah Rapha, the, the God who heals you. Okay, Exodus 15, 26, uh, the word of God still says, you know, by the stripes of Jesus, we were healed, 1 Peter 2, 24. So the standard of God's word is what we should aim for. Yes, sometimes we have positive results and maybe even quick and easy results. Sometimes we have delayed results or maybe we didn't get the results which we expected, but we should try to grow in our faith to such an extent that our experience matches the standard of God's word. Okay, don't give up um, because you didn't see the results in your family. No, keep trying, you know, keep praying, and uh, you will see that what you're seeing happen when you pray for others will also happen in your own family. So you, you just have to be persistent, uh, Jashin. That's my answer to you. I hope uh, it makes sense. Okay. All right. We have three more minutes. Any other um, comments? Okay. So Jashin says, also, whenever I pray for others, my family is impacted in some way. Is this warfare? Okay. So, uh, Jashin, I want to make it very clear that you know this is what believers call as a backlash. Okay. So, what they think is, if they go against demonic powers, if they cast out a demon, that will affect them. That will affect their family. They will have a backlash. But we just read Luke ten nineteen, and Jesus said, "You will trample upon serpents and scorpions, and not." Thing by any means shall harm you. Okay. And uh, similarly, you know, I think it's 1 John 5 18, which uh, says that uh, when we are walking in righteousness, the enemy cannot touch you, it says. Okay. So when we have all these promises where God is saying that you are already protected, we should not fear the devil. Okay, when we fear, some people say, oh, no, pastor, you're saying that nothing will happen, but it happened. You know, I cast out a demon and this happened in my home. You know, the Bible also says when you fear something that comes upon you. So fear is an open door. Fear is you're believing that something evil will take place. So why put your belief there? Even when you fear, things do happen, right? But what does the Bible say? It very clearly says that we don't have to be afraid of any backlash. And that's why I'm repeating again and again about believer's authority, victory of the cross. Because sometimes we don't understand that the devil, he's no comparison to God. Okay? We'll talk about all this in believer's authority, just for you to understand. See, God is the creator. Who is Satan? He is a created, finite being. Where is the comparison? But we are so scared of the devil because we are not understanding who God is. You got it? So we have to understand who God is. We have to understand the meaning of the cross. We have to understand the believer's authority. Then we will recognize Ah, that's why Jesus is saying you will trample. You will trample the serpents and the scorpions. Nothing by any means shall 
harm you so we can be that bold okay and so don't worry about any backlash jashan that's uh, the point i want to make okay great yeah so that's quite clear uh, let's pray and close and this time around the online students please one of you would love to hear your voice please pray and uh, we'll close this morning session father god thank you lord thank you for this time lord god can i can i pray yeah go ahead go ahead jashin we can hear you thank you lord thank you for this time lord god at your feet father god whatever that you have taught us from your word father we thank you lord for giving us the revelation from your word lord god your word says know the truth and the truth will set you free father god father thank you for making it clear to us whatever that we need to learn from your word lord about prayer and how to pray for others and ourselves lord and up and about the spiritual warfare lord help us to engrave this truth in our hearts lord god wherever that we go lord god help us to remember what you want us to remember from your word and the holy spirit will clearly direct us lord god help each of us lord god to obey your word wholeheartedly lord god and remove every fear that is lingering us lord lingering in us lord god because your word says lord fear is not from you lord god but you have given us a sound mind power and love father god thank you lord we give each and every one of us into your hands help us to do lord god what you want us to do in the way that you want us to do from our hearts and glorify your name in jesus mighty matchless name we pray amen Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Jashin. I really appreciate that. Uh, thank you, everybody, for connecting. Uh, this is the last month of our course, so please expect your, uh, uh, of course, the marks of your first graded assignment and your second graded assignment uh, also, you know, will be up. Okay, so please uh, be prepared for that. So thank you and bye for now. God bless.